Dr. Dennis Miller and Dr. Lou George with us from Siouxland Oral Surgery. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. So when do you call in an oral surgeon? Is there a, a team that you work with? How does that come together? Well, that's a, a great question. And the way we run our practice is it's a collaborative effort, a team approach with our referral base of dentists. And luckily in our region, we're blessed with a just a tremendous cadre of really good dentists, both uh, technically and and uh, from an experience standpoint and a knowledge base. So when you come out of dental school, you're given a tool set of different things that you're really good at and you're trained to competence in, and that grows over the years. And in our referral network, in our collaborative team approach, we um, we get called in when the general dentist looks at a case and says, this is something that belongs in the focus of a specialty where we've gotten additional training. And typically that occurs with the more difficult wisdom teeth, uh, with dental implants, and then with some of the facial reconstruction surgeries and grafting that occurs. Because that's where our focus is for four years after dental school. And also, Bill, we always want to be a support system for all of our referrals. And they know that. And those referrals who know us very well know that they can call anytime and uh, we will gladly uh, work with them and work with their patient to make sure that they get a uh, an expedient resolve with this. Yeah, and I just want to add on to that, that one of our fortes is to uh, take care of patients that are that need emergency treatment, somebody who has a, a big infection, they're in pain, a broken tooth that happened yesterday, and both Dr. George and I, we really want to take care of those people because Nobody wants to be in pain or infected and be told, oh, I'm sorry, we're too busy to take care of you. We go the extra mile, we stay the extra hours, we'll work through lunch to take care of that patient pool in specific. And that's, I think, Absolutely. how we really support um, our referrals and the dentists we work with. And that's that's kind of our, our, our block, our, our plug-in as part of the team approach. And this is always very consistent. This isn't anything that's new, Bill. This is something that has been part of our practice philosophy for well over a decade. So we're very happy to be uh, to be able to be that those people that, that folks know they can call. Collaborative effort fits what you not only do for those that call, but you offer training for those and that can come together with you and learn and talk as a group. Yeah, and we do that specifically within our study club. We meet uh, once a month, uh, seven times out of the year. It would be nice to meet uh, 12 times out of the year, but let's face it, there's uh, Christmas holidays and summer, and <laughs> seven seven months out of the year is plenty. And uh, we talk about different topics, um, not only in dentistry, but a lot of them in medicine. Uh, we have lectures on uh, cancer treatment and how the dental field fits in with that. We have lectures on anesthesia. We have um, lectures on ER medicine and general medicine cardiology. And then, of course, we have uh, lectures come in from around the region uh, that talk to us about all the different disciplines of dentistry. So uh, we all learn together. The uh, IV sedation is something that uh, your office has worked very hard at and uh, offers in a way that uh, people should know about. The uh, IV sedation is an integral component of oral surgery. So when you come out of dental school, uh, you're, you're trained as a general dentist, and if you'd like to provide anesthesia services, and some general dentists do, you go on for a different uh, additional training, and that allows you to offer light to moderate sedation in the office for dental procedures. In our world, we're trained under the anesthesiologists in the residency setting, and we can go a little further into the deep sedation area, um, and it has to do with different levels of being able to support the airway. But again, oral surgery by its very nature is, is invasive, so we need that extra tool in our kit to be able to take care of patients um, in, in, a, in a safe and, and, for lack of a better term, humane manner to make it uh, as comfortable as possible. The background that you both have as dentists and then getting specialty training puts you in a position you know what the dentists are going through or have, and now you have additional education, additional training, and experience to serve the customers. Yes, I think uh, both Dr. George and I, we went for additional training after dental school, and we 
did a lot of things that the general dentists would do. So we didn't just come out of oral surgery and, or sorry, out of dental school and into oral surgery and boom, started doing oral surgery. We know the ramifications of what oral surgery does to the, the dentist. Let's say if you're removing a lot of teeth and doing some bone smoothening work, we know how to do that. And as we do it, how it's going to turn out and what impact that will have on the dentist making the dentures. And that's a whole different scenario versus someone who just comes right out of dental school and goes right into oral surgery. They've never really had to make, let's say, dentures out in the real world and deal with some of the problems that can occur if these things aren't done right. So that's why having that additional training after dental school, I think, makes us better oral surgeons. Your experience, uh, Dr. Liu, is uh, got some big communities involved, Philadelphia Temple. We don't normally think of those as uh, the prairie of South Dakota. <laughs> You've seen lots of things in your side of it that you bring to the table that a lot of times people from this part of the world will never see. That's part of your experience. Uh, yes, Bill. Yeah, that that is very true. Uh, uh, where Dr. Miller and I both trained for oral surgery was was Temple uh, University Hospital in Philadelphia, which is uh, a very very busy level one trauma center. Uh, we deal with trauma from all over the region there. So, in terms of managing traumatic injuries um, and uh, reconstructive uh, uh, procedures, uh, our, our training we feel is not only uh, beyond adequate, but exemplary for for what we've we've had to face and encounter out there um, we like to bring our knowledge of dealing with different uh, let's say uh, urban problems uh, that we were able to manage uh, appropriately there uh, back here to our area so seeing a lot of the patients that we we encounter here let's say it's um, nothing really stifles us or, or, or kind of uh, throws us for a loop you've been we, there done that Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, that, that's not any way to uh, puff out our chest or anything in that manner at all. We just feel very comfortable with what we're doing after having been through a very uh, rigorous uh, residency program like we both attended. So if I've got a need for uh, Siouxland oral surgery, how do I get started? Uh, one really good way to get started is to visit us on our website at SiouxlandOralSurgery.com. And uh, take a look at the different services that we offer. We've got a number of nice um, videos and explanations. You get to meet both of us. And then give us a call, 335-1080. Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Bill.